Um, sure. Uh, thanks, you guys, for coming. I, I want to just shout out our marketing department and LA Unified School District personnel who allowed this to happen. Um, it's really a special day when kids can come who might not otherwise have access to see our incredible players and um, believe that they can, you know, be college students or athletes. It's just it's so much bigger than us, and uh, that was a really neat thing. And I've been trying to kind of get it going since I got here, so really meaningful to me. Um, I think uh, Santa Clara is a really good basketball team and they challenged us today with the actions that they run. It was hard, harder to guard, you know, than, than what we faced and um, we're, we're a work in progress. I, I really like that we didn't turn the ball over. I liked that we had to stay kind of foot on the gas all game defensively, um, but we're still getting better. And, and it, you know, I've had really kind coaches on opposing sides when they shake hands and say, hey, now go win it all or do things like that. And I'm with our team every day just trying to get better at small things because we're so far from where we want to be. Um, and so I, I just want the, keep the team to continue to allow us to challenge them and, and keep getting better. Luca? Uh, Juju, just first thing, fastest player in USC history to 1,000 career points in this, this program history. What, what, you know, I know you've reached a lot of milestones in your couple of years here. Does mm -hmm. that mean anything to you? You know, what do you take from that? Yeah, I think I don't take anything for granted. I'm very blessed to be in this position. Uh, grateful for everybody here, coaches, staff, teammates. Uh, couldn't have done it without them. So this is great. Um, something to, to, to build off and continue to, to work on. Um, but yeah, just, just blessed and, and ready for the next team. I think it's always worth noting too, when you break a record at USC, it hits a little different because the people that you're breaking the record from are, are so great. And, and Juju mm -hmm. belongs in that conversation. It's, it's we. I think we're all comfortable to say it. It's it's the great Cheryl Miller who was next, right? And um, so I think sometimes I won't say we take her accolades for granted, but sometimes I said I'm like, wow, she's you know four games into her sophomore year and scored a thousand points. So I think it's it's really an incredible accomplishment. I mean, do you feel like you've gotten almost desensitized at times, Lindsay, to you know the no. last couple of years? No, I mean just because you see the work ethic every day and you see everything that she handles and. Um, to me, I just I think the greatness goes beyond the stat sheet that I don't think everyone else gets to see. Um, but it's really cool when there are things like this that pop out, and you're like, whoa, what was that fast? Um, you know, and, and and so that's it's always a neat thing. I never I never take it for granted. Robert and Ryan. Uh, speaking about that as well, you reached in 38 games, which tied Elena Della Don's mark and the fourth fastest in NCAA history. So what does that mean to kind of be in that company with Elena? Uh, Oh yeah, she she's a great player. Uh, grew up watching her, um, so yeah, I love her game. And you know, everybody on that list is is just you know, really good company. But like I said, I'm I'm blessed to be in that position. Um, and yeah. Ryan, Lindsay, you talked about just putting being able to push down the gas pedal yeah. in this game or having to throughout. How much does that help knowing that Notre Dame is coming up a you know a tough matchup given? In the last two games, obviously, you guys were in control pretty early. Sure. I mean, I, I, I'm pretty transparent with the team about messages because they're mature, and I think they uh, they don't get ahead of themselves. But we, you know, we knew coming into this stretch of three home games that we probably have superior talent, even though obviously they have a ton of respect for what these coaches run and what they're building with their programs. So we talked about we can decide whether we want to just show up and play the game or we can decide whether or not we're trying to get more prepared for when Notre Dame comes in. Um, or are we, are we getting better through games and actual game play? Um, and I do think they've taken on that challenge. Um, you know, we wanted to hold Pollard, who's a terrific player, who's having 26, one to hold her to single digits, almost got there. Um, that's a credit to her that, you know, she's challenging. And, you know, they ran some Princeton action. So um, we, we, we have been trying to get our players ready for what's coming forward in addition to ready for these games. And I think, you know, of course we have lapses, but I think for the most part, um, you know, they're really buying into that and, and, and we're better than we were when we got off the plane from Paris. Second row, and then Jill. Hey, Juju, uh, congrats on the milestone, first of all. Um, I was curious, what part of your offensive progression you're most proud of this season? From last year? Yeah. Um, I think, I don't know, I think just my ability to, to kind of see the floor, I think I'm seeing the floor better this year. Um, trying to give my teammates the ball where they like it as much as possible. Um, but I, I, I would say just IQ. I, I feel like as, as a player, it's, it's grown since last year. Joe, in the back row, then Orange. Juju, since there's comparisons from fans about, you know, looking at you and Caitlin, you accomplished a milestone two games quicker than Caitlin. Do you, do you monitor 
I do not monitor. Uh, she's a great player. Uh, glad to be in that company, but you know I, I don't really um, monitor that at all. Back up. <laughs> Yes, yes, sir. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, this is for Kiki and Juju. You uh, both seem to mix up your game today by you take more outside shots, I saw, and Juju, you take more inside. I like that. Uh, can you talk about what the emphasis was and the intention behind that um, for this particular game and how you would like to do that throughout the season? Yeah, I think the biggest emphasis for today was just the details. Like, we've been preaching that the whole week is, like, honing in on our details, and that's going to be the biggest challenge for us. So it wasn't so much like, okay, let me shoot outside. I think, honestly, I like outside shots more than layups, but um, it was just more so reading what they were giving me. They were doubling me, so I knew if I wanted a one-on-one, -on -one, I needed to, to stretch out the floor a little bit more. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of what I was reading. It's like the paint was packed, so let me step out a little bit more. Amanda. Amanda, okay. Like, how do games like this, this is for all three of you all, like, kind of build up the chemistry on the court and help you kind of understand your players and even, like, for Lindsay, like, the rotations? Like, how do yep. you, like, how do you sort of get kind of help kind of get familiar? Well, I can start with that. I told them kind of a story the other day that um, the biggest difference when I went to the NBA, um, when you go from college, is just, like, the lack of practice time. Once you have training camp, you then like don't practice again. That's kind of like, oh my gosh, like when do we go over the scouting before? Like when do we get better? And my colleagues were like, no, you gotta get better in the games. Like they have to evolve through games. Um, and so I think that's something interesting. I'm not gonna give back our days of practice in college. Obviously we're gonna use them, but it's something I think we have smart players. We have pro style players and I want them to work through some of those things, right? Like there is some intentionality about inverting Juju and Kiki. We haven't had a post player that shoots it as well as she does. Well, that should open up you know, some things inside for our bigger guards and let them read. Are you double to kick it? Are you single coverage score it? Or can, you, can you split the double and score? Like I'm trying to do my best to put them in situations to grow. And then, you know, we have players with varied skill sets. So, okay, if you're in this two man game with this player, where do they like it? Or, you know, for a, a three man game and they tag the roller, is it a shake? Like we've been trying to work on that through games in, in addition to practice. So it doesn't always look perfect, but I do think we should be getting better over the course of the season and, and be ready for what defenses are going to throw at us. Um, Juju faced every possible crazy scheme last year, but now it's figuring out, like she kind of talked about, with, with teammates and what, okay, what is the defense giving me? What can I take? What can someone else get off of that? And we're all learning that um, in the flow. So I'm trying to use those game, these games to do that as well. Lindsay, come on. Yeah. you mentioned that. I was just curious. The LA Unified, the partnership today you said you wanted to do that for, for a while since you got here how, how did that come together what was just the context behind that for today yeah I mean our marketing team has done a lot of great things but we've had a come to college game that's been on the weekend and they, they've gotten kids here then but I was like no can we do it where the school system like there, it's a school day and we get buses and as part of like a field trip they come and so I just kind of put that out there and marketing ran with it I really really appreciate that because you know, I'll have big ideas, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go coach the team. Can you make it happen? And they really did, which was, which was neat. Come on, Joe. Uh, for Juju, um, you started the season. Uh, you had nine turnovers, and then the game after that, you had three, and then no turnovers last game. Two turnovers this this game. It seems like your uh, kind of, you know, your game kind of changed from last year. Uh, what aspects did you, uh, what ex what aspects of the game did you work on in the off season to kind of limit those turnovers and uh, mm -hmm. kind of increase the IQ? Yeah, IQ. I think credit to Ole Miss, you know, to start a season off that, start a season off uh, with them and then uh, have to be, you know, the first game back. You know, I, I was, um, it took me a minute to adjust in that game and um, I think we saw that through the turnovers. Um, I would say this this past summer has been on working on aspects of my game, um, reading the floor better. I think that that's really helped me um, kind of limit that. Um, and as the see as the season progresses, uh, we'll continue to kind of evolve in that aspect. And, and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take some of the uh, some of the heat on the Ole Miss game. I, I, they're really good. They're really good defensively. That team's gonna win a ton of games and gonna hold people to a lot of points. But I, you know, I thought we the turnovers were as much on the offense as they were on in the individual player. Like, I just didn't think we were smooth and we've gotten better since then. So I don't know, you know, you can find the numbers, but I would say the zero turnovers, the two turnovers are a lot more kind of 
where Juju's going to be at, then then um, I, I think that first game was a little bit of an anomaly. I'll take that as much on me on, on any of our players. It was, it was not pretty, and that, that's on me. Joe, in front row, then Ryan. Just for everyone, the first three minutes of the game, how, how much did Rhea give you a lift with the two blocks and scoring and the rebounding kind of help propel that 7-0 run to start? Did you guys want to speak to that? Yeah, I think Rhea is such birthday. an anchor. Yeah, it's her birthday. Happy birthday to Rhea. <laughs> but I think Rhea is such an anchor for this team. She's one of the players that has been here since the beginning. Um, so I think we really like count on her like just defensively to bring that energy. She's always talking and like she's very helpful for me in the post like defensive schemes. But I think she brings a lot of energy and just like is allowing all of us to play with confidence because of all the knowledge that she has being here for four years. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna ask because you guys are such a good you know defensive team and such a good offensive team inside the paint. But I know today three point shooting was a little bit of a struggle for you guys. I think you guys went six for twenty eight and so far in the season it has been. Is that kind of a like cause for concern? Is that something just to work on for the next week against Notre Dame? Yeah, I mean, I have I have a lot of confidence in our shooters. I want us to you know find the right shots, and then we trust that we'll knock them down. But I think there's there's a lot of it's a lot of attempts, it's a lot of great shots. People are packing the paint a bit because they're so concerned about kicking the paint. They're so concerned about Juju's driving lanes or post ups, and so we're trying to take what the defense gives us. But we can continue to get better on which are the best ones to take and are they in rhythm. But I'm not worried because we have you know, really good shooters. And I think what you saw the other night is, you know, we shot uh, 50% from three. And so, um, you know, we'll, we'll catch our rhythm with that and, and figure out, you know, how to take advantage of what people are doing. But um, we, we know we're capable of knocking down shots too. Ryan, second round and last question in the back. Uh, for Kiki and Juju, uh, you guys have won the last three games by a combined margin of like 181 points or something. Obviously people could look at that game, those games and assume you don't learn a ton about it yourselves as a team during that stretch. But, you know, Lindsay mentioned how you're a different team than you were when you came back from France. Where have you guys seen this team maybe take the biggest strides over the course of the last I week? I think every game counts, you know, regardless of who we play. Um, like Coach said, every game is to get better, and, and that's what we're doing. It's not only in games, it's in practice too. So as we continue to learn each other over the course of uh, the time we have, um, I think that's more valuable than anything, just, just experiencing things together and, um, our chemistry will continue to grow. I mean, we're all kind of new together, so that'll continue to evolve. But um, we don't take any game for granted. Everything matters um, and everything counts towards getting better. Yeah, and I, I just add, like, regardless of, like, if we win, um, our coaches are still breaking down things that we can get better on. And, you know, we're kind of having all these games for a bigger purpose. So I think we're just taking, you know, the good, the bad, and we're just learning from every single game. Lindsay, I had uh, two for you. First off, just, you know, it seemed like after your timeouts, especially today, uh, you were able to find situations to get you more involved or, like, flash your hands during the post. I'm curious, just, you know, this season, with bringing all this new talent in, her being off the ball more, what kind of challenges have been for you to find ways to get her involved and play some minutes and drive? I think for, for the, it's a really great question. Um, uh, I would say what we've really tried to do, which will make us hard to scout long term, is our ability to play in transition and play in flow where we're not slowing it down and saying, okay, set up, set up your defense on Kiki. What are you going to do? What, set up your defense on Juju, but really to make them make decisions. That being said, we also know we have, you know, two players in particular that at their positions are the best, you know, at doing what they do. And so I'm trying to ATOs and things like that really get our execution better, whether it's for Juju or Kiki or Kennedy or whoever, right? Or, you know, let them make the read and make the play, whether that's a shot or not. So I'm trying to have a balance between playing in flow and playing fast and, and getting easy baskets. And then when there's an opportunity to get a play call, going to things and executing what we know what we can work on. So that's what I've been trying to try to do. Um, and the second one was just, you know, I think we're seeing this across the sport. Three pointers has been declining for the decade, but it seems like especially this year in the NBA, you have guys taking way more pull ups. I think, you know, we'll probably see it more in the W in college as well. And you have Kiki saying, uh, you know, she likes, shooting more than layups sometimes. I think uh, half of Juju shots were with threes. I'm curious what you think of that overall, like, tactically, uh, but yep. also development. Yeah, I mean, all the analytics in the NBA will tell you that people are really big on layups or threes, layups or threes, but I, I think also women's basketball is a different sport, and pull-up jumpers are often the difference, but really I just want players who learn and understand the game and take what the defense gives them. So 
like you gotta take threes when they're open. You, you gotta feel confident to do it if you're, you know, if you've proven that you can make them practice and you're a shooter. Um, and at the same time, like figuring out, okay, if you're a threat to take a three, what else can we get? Is it is it in rhythm? But I'm not a big, I'm not die hard analytics, threes and layups only, not in women's basketball. Um, and I think ultimately what will make us the best team that we can be uh, will be if we can take what the defense gives us, find the spots, have our players feel comfortable in execution, but also in free flowing and. And, and we'll get, I think, to the balance that's right for us. Final question today. Uh, switching to defense, uh, I saw that you mixed in the first half uh, with press and you went a uh, couple different presses, full court presses. Uh, this is for all you ladies and uh, coach. Uh, talk about what's the defense that you, uh, what set is the defense that you would like uh, moving forward? Are you going to ask them what is it like this? <laughs> Personally, <laughs> I mean, I I think it comes down to whatever coach wants us to. You know, I'm I love pressing. I guess uh, I'm glad I'm not you know the main trapper. But yeah, uh, whatever coach V sees, uh, we're gonna exploit that because at the end of the day, you know, um, it throws off the other team and we're able to get uh, easy buckets. Hopefully, so. Yeah, love all types of defense, but really we just listen to what our coaches. I saw the spark once you're out press. Yeah, it, it, it does give it a lot of energy. Run, so that's why I was asking yeah. that. Yeah, I think we have a lot of great athletes that can do a multitude of things. So like sometimes we have Rhea at the front of our press and then sometimes she's not. So I think it's great um, having a bunch of different athletes. So we can, as Juju said, mix up the defenses. We hedge sometimes, we ice. Um, but yeah, as Juju said, we just, whatever our coaches want, we'll make sure we do it. <laughs> Hedge. Hedge is keeping space. <laughs> <laughs>